Why don't you tell me I'm an attractive young lady? Or ask me if I've ever been in love? Mm, wouldn't you rather talk about bikes? This is a hidden camera. I'll explain that in a bit. I rode alone to Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue, a rally whose sole purpose is not what you might expect. More on that later. To me, I see a weekend of bike watching and that feeling that comes when it's just you, the road, and two wheels. To our friends and family who don't ride, it's a very different perspective. What do you think of a woman going to a rally alone? Um, I think it's brave. Actually, anyone, whether it's woman or man, alone in a rally, I don't think it's a good idea. Because there's safety in numbers, obviously. And even some of you watching have shown concern about these solo trips. Like this clip on my road trip at the tail of the dragon that, to me, seemed insignificant. You're riding alone? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. That moment got more concerning comments than I would have expected, with many of you warning of the dangers of riding alone, and at the very least, to never tell those I meet on the road I'm riding alone. Which, in hindsight, is a good point. Before anyone calls me a man-hater again for making videos like these, as a former self-defense instructor trained by a retired Special Forces combat veteran, being overly cautious is a part of my training. I believe it's always better to be safe than sorry, woman or man. Having comments from the dark side of the internet to share is simply a part of having an online presence, not asking for it. If I'm at dinner with my mom and I want her to pass the salt, I don't put on my special salt costume. I ask for the salt! It's the idea that people need to be even more cautious of riders that I am challenging. There seems to be a certain perspective about the riding community from those who don't ride. Group of friends that like, like to go together, you know, motorcycle gangs or whatever, riding gangs, I don't know if gang's the appropriate word, but <laughs> I don't know, just some, you know, with the jackets and like a strong, muscular person. Muscular? Like a policeman, like somebody very strong. Like me? Not really. <laughs> I picture a bunch of people on the highway, high speeds passing me. Oh no. <laughs> and it's often different from those who do ride. People riding motorcycles? <laughs> <laughs> I have fun dressing whatever the part is, whether the part is being an attorney and I got to go to trial and that's like a part of like, I put on my game face and I like dress in my suit. Um, it's sort of the same thing. Like if I go to a rally, it's like, you know, the, my biker persona and I get- For all our non-rider friends and family, I hope to show them what we see. Now back to that hidden camera. I rode alone to the Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue Rally, so you can see through my eyes what interactions are like as a woman alone at one of these rallies. I wore the armored pants I rode in, a black shirt, and switched out my riding boots for some sneakers. I'm on a Tiger 900! <laughs> yeah? Why? Why serious? <laughs> it can. <laughs> um, not yet. I was planning on going there tomorrow with a friend. Have you done the big trail on your bike yet? Uh, not yet. That's tomorrow. Yes. I'm excited. I've heard good things about it. I've been on it three times already. Oh, yeah? Three days. Oh, nice. So, uh. You got plans going on? Yeah, we're gonna have dinner with my old high school friend. I was gonna say. <laughs> We're fixing to go over to Fake Trail for just a few minutes. Nice. And then we're going to a concert. Nice. Go to a concert? Oh, no, I'm good. Dinner, huh? Here you I'm going to dinner and then I'm going to bed. Going to bed early. Right. <laughs> Safe travel. You too. Thank See ya. You. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to blame the guy for trying. And I didn't blur his face because I thought what he did was wrong. Just in case he was a little embarrassed by this. Even still, he was respectful. Oh my god. Cool. What are you doing? I'm just taking videos of your cool bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen anything like this except Tell for me about you. Well, I'm riding too. 
but not, nothing like th quite like this. I've, I have ridden a street glide and road glide. That's the closest thing I'd say to that. But today I'm on a Tiger 900. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's been fun. Nice. Yourself? Yeah. Please? Yeah. My husband used to ride street, but he didn't like it. So I'm like, well, I still like bikes, but I like you too. So I'll keep you both. <laughs> Have, I now have the experience of being a solo travel woman traveler, you know, in Latin America for over two years. I think it all comes in like very good heartedness. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's rare to get that. Like, it, it, it it's all about the intention. Good. How are you? Watch your videos all the time. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm thank you. Good job. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Well, thank you so much. You went down to Cliff. Yes. Because after watching you, he's like, that's our next oh, yeah? oh, yeah? We're not going to lose our key pop. Good. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. As always, it was just as we riders expected. Pretty anticlimactic. Like at Sturgis, I wasn't approaching people that I'd been drinking or going to bars. And I was mostly keeping to myself. But several months before this, I broke this rule at Daytona's Biketoberfest. I was conducting interviews on Main Street where drinking starts at 10 a.m. and directly approaching people to start a conversation. And that's where I experienced more of what those who don't ride might expect. Don't put this on news because I got a warrant out for my arrest. Well, I ain't never been in public this naked. Like, do I need to whoop somebody? They won't touch me. Oh, oh no. Just Stop. Program. Don't kiss your shoulder. And I remembered something I saw online several years ago. So she created three completely identical accounts on Tinder. One where she had very minimal makeup, almost bare face makeup. The other one, average amounts of makeup. And then finally, the third account with heavy makeup. With the heavy makeup, it was people assumed, the men assumed that she was a little bit more, based on the language, uh, sexual, pr sexually promiscuous. If people could be treated so differently with something like that, what about the difference between these two looks? And specifically, at a rally. I probably have gotten more sexually harassed by lawyers, male lawyers, uh, in professional settings than I have by bikers. At the start of this video, I said that Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue is a rally whose sole purpose is not what non-riders might expect. Here's what I mean. If you look on their website, it isn't just any rally. It's a non-profit rally that benefits women, children, and the underserved people of Northwest Arkansas. They have donated over three million to local charities and publicly make it a point to not tolerate racism, sexism, or any other form of intolerance. This woman right here, I heard speak at the Sturgis rap party last year. From the age of four to 22, she was a sex trafficking victim. She said that as a child, she was trafficked at the Sturgis rally among many locations. At the event, she said that now, motorcyclists are some of her favorite people, and that rallies are one of her favorite places to go to share about her nonprofit organization, Treasured Lives. Like even if my wife wanted to go to a rally by herself, I would feel 100% comfortable with her going. All these questions kind of have like the, the end of the spectrum where like what people would expect and then it's like polar opposite when you actually go and see like how tight knit the community is like. Remember this guy? We ran into him again towards the end of the day and the sun was setting. He recommended that at that point, we should leave. One of my favorite stories about motorcyclists are when a group of riders escort a kid to school that is being bullied. We were just trying to uplift her spirits and let her know that not everybody is mean and there is plenty of nice people in the world. Little did they know, Tammy's angel would end up being hell on wheels. Okay. He was talking about killing himself because he wasn't even happy from getting bullied and picked on at school, so it broke my heart. More than 50 bikers joining together from all corners of Indiana to escort Phil to his first day of sixth grade. He was smiling and just happy. An 11 year old easy rider making a grand entrance to middle school. If there's anything I wish riders to be known for, it's how we come together to help those in need. 100% of your super thanks received on this video will go directly to the Treasured Lives Foundation and I will match what you send up to $1,000. By the way, shout out to this guy that I used in the thumbnail and I found on wondercostumes.com. 
you're the real MVP here. For those that think of riders as Sons of Anarchy or the viral police chase compilations, maybe this video can help them see the other side of us. I was just trying to start a conversation. 